So I get this question a lot, and that is, how do I not take blurry photos? J -j Just don't. That's all I got. Basically, there are a couple main reasons why you're getting blurry photos, and they all do start with, well, well, you and your settings. So you have to know what you're doing. And I'm here to break some of them down for you. So what are at least the four common problems? They're just out of focus. You're, you you don't know what you're doing in regards if you, if you, the thing is just out of focus in general. You may have went too far in your range or something like that. Um, yeah, it, it's just not in focus. Either your subject's moving when you're using a slower shutter speed, so you're not, not sure what you're doing at slower shutter speed, or you're getting camera shape because you are using a slower shutter speed. So those things can really also factor in, as well as your depth of field and getting that nice bulk. Yeah, uh, yeah. if you're using a small like aperture, like an f1.4, f1.8, or, or whatever like that, when you should be using like an f4, that could be a huge thing. So there are at least a couple of the issues that you have when you're just starting out. And you know what? You may get blurry photos. Here are some things, here's at least nine ways to prevent blurry photos. Apply them now. You can always go safe and use protection. By that I mean a tripod, nothing else. But if you're in a location to where you can't, then bring a freaking monopod, doesn't matter. Use a shoe if you need to, you know, just don't limit yourself. But basically there are multiple ways to where you can even position yourself. Let me just put this down. So that way you can hold the camera correctly. For example, I'll grab my camera right here. And what the, one of the main things you do, and this really helps for video, is called three points of access, or basically three points. So right here you have one, you have two holding the lens. And one of the biggest things you could do is you can lean yourself up against the wall and that'll become really stable. A lot of people like to lean it against their, you know, against their eye really tightly or something like that, against their chest, something. Something there has to be three points of impact, basically like a tripod. So if you all, if you're finding yourself in a situation to no matter what, you can't get your settings down, you can always be safe. Use something stable. We could talk about rules again, and once again, I'm going to show you to break it. Well, it doesn't matter, but basically we can use the focal length to shutter speed rule. So basically, rule of thumb, going old school, is that if say if you're using your 7200 lens at 150 millimeters, so you're almost at 200, but you're not. Once again, it doesn't really matter. But basically, it's the rule would say that your shutter speed should be no lower than your focal length. So it would be no lower than 150th of a second to be safe. So this can apply to most of the stuff you're using. Uh, but it's when you start to get to like the 18 millimeters, which you know what, it doesn't really matter anyway, because it's so wide uh, and your depth is so wide. So you might not show shake anyway. So if you're really worried, but I break this rule a lot because I don't, I don't need it. I know what I'm doing. But that's one of the one of the safest rules that you can do in regards to well not knowing what you're doing. So set your set your shutter speed. That's a mouthful to say. Hmm. Set your shutter speed. Set your shutter speed uh, no lower than your focal length. So if it's 150 millimeters, you wouldn't go below like 1 25th, 150th of a second shutter. So as I was saying, your aperture. You're using an f 1.4 when you should have been using an f 5.6. So that way, if someone moved like this, they were out of focus. If you're using 1.4. When yet again, if you were trying to get a portrait and you know, an F4 would have been nice, you would have everything in focus, uh, you know, and you could have got a nice blurry background. So if that's what you're trying to go for in regards to blurriness in an image is the background, AKA bokeh, then you're doing it wrong. It's not necessarily just the apertures, distance, everything that goes into it. But yeah, so you got to watch your aperture because if you're using too shallow of a, you know, of a focal plane, a depth of field, and just picture that like two bars, that's your plane. So if you're an F1.4, it's like that. If you're an F4, you get a little bit of space. So think of that kind of in headroom. You know, you might get the tip of the nose or your nose in focus with one four. When F4, you would have got something way more in focus and it wouldn't be as blurry. Oh God. Well, actually popping a flash can help as well. You don't always need to use something really extravagant, anything. You can just pop a flash. It's because if you're forcing yourself to use a slower shutter speed, the flash will actually get captured within your, um, within your shutter movement and it will freeze your subject. If you don't believe me, try it out. But that's one of the main things a lot of people like to use flash for because you can use those slower shutter speeds because you have to because of the environment and you can freeze the motion with a flash. Something simple as this. When you have your camera, you can always use something like this. This is a remote for my TV. But yeah, um, I don't really own one, uh, a shutter remote or anything like that, uh, or a specific timer because I, I don't need it. I don't use it that much. But if you want to get, you could put something that get, basically fits into your camera, it plugs right into the side that you could use as a shutter or a release. That way, boom, you click it, it's off camera. You're not physically touching. I'll show you. You're not physically touching the shutter button. You're clicking something that's already safe and secure and you have a trigger that's, well, this would probably be on a tripod if you're doing that. So that's always an option. That or you could put it on some kind of timer. So that way you are nowhere near the camera. You're not touching the camera whatsoever. You can click it, put it on two second delay 
and it'll take the image. So that way you get optimal stabilization. Not sure if you could see it, but this has VR. So basically if you're using a lens, lenses have these, some of them. They have VR, uh, OS, or IS. So image stabilization, uh, optical stabilization. Basically there is parts in here that counteract your natural shakes. So that way you can gain a couple more, you know, stops on your shutter speed or something like that. So that way you can use slower shutters. So, you know, just an example with a, a lens that Nikon released, the 7200 F4, it's got five stops of VR compensation. So you could be at like one fifteenth of a second and it will look like, you know, it's just fine. It's, it's perfect. So image stabilization, vibration reduction, they can help. Just don't go too crazy in the wider angles. <sighs> Did you know that holding your breath will actually help you stabilize? Well, I'm going to tell you that's not right because I learned it's the opposite way. If you exhale and if you try it right now, you would see the exact same thing. As you exhale, your body's actually calm. It's just, it's just, it's just calm. So basically, as you, you know, if you're looking to get really stable, so, so you see your body will get very calm. It's less tense and you're not like struggling for air uh, as you're trying to, well, you're not breathing. So it doesn't matter. So exhale instead of inhaling and holding your breath. It works better and it looks so much smoother. A huge thing a lot of people mess up is their focus mode. Make sure you're in the right focus mode because this can really make a blurry image because, well, put it this way. You have two basic, basic points of focus. You have autofocus, autofocus single, so you have a single point or continuous. If you're on continuous, your little dot thing, it's going to go travel everywhere because uh, it's trying to find what you're doing. So if you're shooting a portrait, you wouldn't use that because your portrait isn't going like this to pose. If not, you'd probably slap them because they need to stop. So yeah, basically know what you're doing. You use continuous more or less for sports, something moving, so something's tracking. So right there you would use something and your dot would follow it. Or if you're on single focus, it's something that's not moving, something like this, a nice little headshot or something. Yeah, so if you mix those up, your thing will hunt and you probably will get a blurry photo. I'm not a huge fan of this, but you know what? It actually can help. Uh, it even helps for blinking. And what is that? That is putting your camera into a continuously low burst. So it doesn't go nuts. It's not crazy. It's like three or four. So it can do something like this. And that way you can see once again, because it kind of relies on hope that you hope that one of the three or four shots you just took is in focus. Don't hope. Um, but yeah, if you are really, really desperate, you can put your camera uh, into that setting. So low continuous and you probably will get uh, some kind of um, well, I guess sharp image. So eh, just risky. Eric Rossi, the guy with the eye, giving you nine tips to prevent blurry photos right now. As I said, you can apply these right now. They're all going to mainly work. It's just that some are a little iffy and you can only really do them if you're desperate. So just really watch your shutter speeds, uh, your focus mode and your aperture uh, and just whatever you're doing or your subject for that matter too. So we have, if you guys have any other tips, add them down below. That's all I got. Give us a quick thumbs up. If this helped you out. That's all I got. Just don't take a blurry freaking photo. It's easier than, you know. Yeah, don't do that.